Problem two, so we got dragon fruit, elderberry, and fig. I'm going to call them DEF. They form a partnership by contributing the various assets described below. Now, it's important to note that each partner is going to have liabilities that they contribute in addition to assets. And the net amount of liabilities that, I'm sorry, net amount of assets they're contributing are $200 each. They're each going to get a one-third interest in the partnership. So the partnership is going to take on all these liabilities that are on the property that they're contributing. So D contributes land, fair market value 400, recourse mortgage 240, um, has a basis of $100, and D also contributes cash. E contributes a building, which is section 1231 asset, value of 260, and adjusts the basis of 130, and there's a non-recourse mortgage on it of $60. F contributes zero basis accounts receivable and zero basis accounts payable. So what are the tax consequences to each partner and the partnership? All right. So we know we're dealing with partnership tax because, well, the question asks us, what's the consequences of partner and partnership? But we also have the formation of partnership itself. So again, on formation, because we have partners here contributing property, we have a Section 721 non-recognition rule when the partners contribute property in exchange for a partnership interest. And the partnership also has no gain or loss recognized as well. Now, this problem brings some unique issues, mainly dealing with liabilities. There's liabilities involved in this problem. Again, each partner contributes property, but also contributes some type of liability that the partnership takes on. So the issue is, do we view the liability issues together with the formation separately? How does that work? Because we know that there's no gain or loss to the partners and the partnership when the property is transferred for the partnership interest, but how does the liability affect things? And the answer is basically there's two steps, but the tax law treats it together. Because liabilities under the tax law on formation, contribution, whatever you want to call it, when a partner has liability relief where the partnership takes it on, that's viewed as a cash distribution, a constructive cash distribution to the partner. And that is going to reduce the adjusted basis. And if the basis goes negative, there will be capital gain in general to the partner because we can't have negative basis. However, if a partner takes on liabilities, that's viewed as a constructive cash contribution. And we're going to increase the adjusted basis because just like if you contributed any property, you would get to increase your basis by the amount of that property. All right. So we're going to start here by looking at the partnership, the consequences of the partnership. Again, we're going to do a balance sheet. We've got our asset side of the balance sheet. We've got our liabilities. And we've got our capital account. So the assets here, the partnership receives. We've got land, cash, building, accounts receivable. There's also accounts payable, but of course that's a liability. So we put them in order of liquidity. We've got cash first. Accounts receivable next. Land and building. We've got two columns. We've got our tax and book columns. We've got our liabilities. Now, the liabilities here. We've got accounts payable. We've got a recourse liability, and we've got a non-recourse liability. And of course, for capital, we've got D, E, and F. We've got our tax capital amount, and we've got our book capital amount. 
So let's go through the assets. So again, remember, every non-recognition rule has a corresponding basis rule. The corresponding basis rule for the partnership is inside basis. We carry over the basis. So the cash is just going to be the face mount, $40 for both of these. Accounts receivable, zero basis and a 350 book value. Land has a basis of 100 and a 400 value. And building has a value of 260 and a basis of 130. We add up the book amount, which is important for getting our capital book, right? Because that needs a balance. We get 1050. The liabilities, accounts payable, we've got 150. Recourse liability, we've got 240. And non recourse liability, we've got 60. When we add those up, we get 450. So the book capital account should equal 1050 minus 450 is 600. Since they each own one third of the partnership, 200, 200, 200. All right. With respect to the tax column for the capital account, we need to determine what that is. And the best way to do that is to look at the partners themselves. So we go to each partner. We've got D. Oops, I'm sorry. We have to think about D, E, and F. No gain or loss recognized on the contribution of property. But we have these liabilities where there could be capital gain under relief. So here's the issue. It's a two-step idea, but the tax law puts it together in terms of the tax consequences. We've just gone through and considered the tax consequences of the partnership, and that's fine. The liabilities have no effect on the partnership. They do affect the partners. The best way to do this is to create a table. Whenever you have liability relief, you need to create a table. So we're going to put each partner, D, E, and F, and we're going to go through and determine two things. The basis after taking into account the liabilities and if any partner has gain on the transaction due to liability relief. Our starting point is our outside adjusted basis on formation. So for this, we're going to look at what D contributes. D contributes land and cash. The land has a basis of 100. The cash has a basis of 40. So we add them together to get the outside basis on formation of 140. E contributes a building of a basis of 130. And F contributes two things, both a basis of zero, accounts receivable and accounts payable, both basis of zero. Okay, so we start there. Next, we're going to take into account the liabilities. Let's start in order of D's liability. So we have D's recourse relief. So the amount of the liability that D has relief for is $240. So we put negative 240 because it's providing relief, right? Relief is a distribution to the partner. However, you also have to put a line for the liabilities taken on because the partnership takes it on, but the partners ultimately are responsible in the end of the day. So recourse taken on. So we have a $240 recourse liability, right? It's this right here. The question is, how is that allocated among the partners? The general rule for recourse liabilities is we use the loss ratio which they all share profits, losses, and capital one-third. So one-third of 240, 80, 80, 80, and that's positive because we're taking it on. It's viewed as a cash contribution. Now we do E's non-recourse liability. So E's non-recourse relief, the amount of the liability we're told in the problem is 60, so we do negative 60 there. Okay. 
And then we have to allocate that non-recourse liability. So non-recourse taken on non-recourse liabilities. The general rule is we allocate non-recourse liabilities based on profit ratio. So again, capital, profits, and losses are all one-third. So we do 20, 20, 20. So the next element is FIG. FIG has accounts payable. When you have zero basis accounts receivable, accounts payable, there's a question about, okay, there's a special rule, I should say, special rule. The special rule is you're allowed to offset the accounts receivable with the accounts payable. So we have $350 of accounts receivable here, and we've got $150 of accounts payable. So if we net them together, we get $200 of accounts receivable. We're allowed to do this in the tax law with respect to this item, and because we have positive accounts, we don't have a liability when we net the two, we don't have to put in the $150 of accounts payable. Therefore, we don't put in any accounts payable. So we go ahead and we sum these items together. For D, we're going to get zero. For E, we're going to get 170. And for F, we're going to get, wait, hold on, 130. Yeah, 170. And F, we're going to get 100. If any of these numbers are negative, we have a gain uh, for the amount because we have to make the basis equal zero. We can't have negative basis. But guess what? None of the numbers are zero. I'm sorry, none of the numbers are negative. My apologies. I was thinking of the number that's zero. None of the numbers are negative. So therefore, there's no gain by any parties in this problem. So no gain or loss by D, E, or F. No gain to the partnership. The 0, 170, and 100 respectively to D, E, and F, that's going to be their outside basis after we take into account the liability. So at the end of this problem. So that's the outside basis each partner has. Now, we didn't finish the capital, um, the tax column of the capital accounts for D, E, and F. So if there were no liabilities here on formation, this would equal the amount of the outside basis at the end of the problem to each partner. But there are liabilities. The liabilities are taken into account here. So we have to separate them out. So when you do have liabilities on formation, the outside basis of each partner will be here. 140 to D, 130 to E, and 0 to F. So we'll go ahead and put those in. 140, 130, and 0. Not done. Also have to worry about tacking. Remember for the partnership, all items tack. All get to add on the holding period held before. For D, E, and F, so D is contributing land, which was held as an investment, and cash. So D has a split holding period. E is contributing a 1231 asset, so E gets the TAC. And F contributes accounts receivable and accounts payable, which are ordinary income assets. So F has a fresh start. Now, before we finish this problem, I want to change up one fact to show you the effect of what happens if you have a negative basis by one of the partners. We are not going to consider the effect to the partnership, but you can do that now that you know how to apply the partnership rules for the partnership. We're only going to look at the partners. We're only going to look at the table. What if I told you, and I know it won't balance out, right, because they're each receiving one-third, one-third, one-third. Because if they're unrelated, they're all going to want to be giving up the same thing. But again, at the same token, partnership has extreme flexibility. If the partners wanted to give one third, one third, one third, one third, and one partner doesn't give as much as the others, they can do whatever they want as long as they're not related. Let's say that the recourse mortgage, so we're going to leave all the facts the same. The only difference is that the recourse mortgage is not 240. We're going to change it to $300. And again, we're not going to worry about the partnership side of things, even though it's going to be very similar for the partnership. No gain or loss, but it will change some stuff on the balance sheet. So we're changing the 240 number to $300. So looking at our table, some stuff will indeed change. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase the items that are going to change. All right. So we got a $300 recourse liability. So D now has $300 of relief. 
They're each one-third partners. Remember, recourse liabilities we allocate using the loss ratio. One-third, one-third, one-third. So we're going to have 100, 100, 100. Everything else is the same. So now if we take into account F has a 120 basis, E has a 190 basis, D has negative 40. Okay? Negative 40. You can't have a negative basis. So when it's negative, you have to do gain for the same amount. So we do $40 of capital gain to D, and that gives D's basis zero. But note, D does have a 40 gain. So no gain or loss to EF in the partnership. D is going to have a $40 capital gain, and D's basis is now zero. And then you have the basis of EF in the partnership, um, or you can do the partnership's basis in those assets. The partnership basis and the assets stay the same because all that changed was the liability. And we are done with this problem.